Hi, welcome to the webcast. My name is John. Today we're going to be going through the preventative maintenance on the Sure Immersion 312 for the 12 month schedule. So, in the box that comes with the uh, preventative maintenance kit, of course, you're going to get a set of instructions that have a list of uh, inspect items like the power cord and, and other things to make sure everything is, is uh, the way it should be. You're going to get a list of parts. This, uh, this is a rebuild valve kit. It's going to rebuild this valve right here in the front. You're going to get a couple of these here to replace the seals for the powder. Also, where the water dispenses into the mixing chamber, you're going to get uh, a couple of these here to replace, and we're just actually going to change the O-ring on that, but you'll see that later. Uh, there's a silicone elbow that fits right back in here, and we've got some parts that go in the back of the machine. This uh, is a, a vacuum pump. This will go into the side of the machine. This is a little filter that goes into a tube. You may or may not have the, one of these in your machine, and if you don't, we'll, we'll cut the tube and just insert it in there. We're also going to get five of these. These valves here are along the back of the machine. There's a small back access panel. You take these valves out and, and rebuild them with these. There's four screws there. This is a brew screen right in the top of the brew box here. Uh, this is going to be an inspect item, and if you need to replace it, then you have one. Also, if you get to a point where you need to delime the tank, uh, the kit comes with a, a, a tank lid gasket. This is not necessary to replace. This is only here if you need to replace it. And last, we have a little bit of a gauge, and then it has to do with the tension arm that brings this up and down. And uh, I'll show you that here in just a little while. Okay, we'll start with the, the rebuilding the valve here in the front. It just pulls out. There's no screws or anything. It just pulls out of the, out of the grommet there. We undo the wires and disconnect the tube. So for this valve, we don't need any tools. It's just a quarter turn. This comes out, another quarter turn, the bottom comes off. Got this little O-ring here. You've got uh, the seal right here that comes out in that white gasket. After you've got everything back together, connect the tube first. Makes it a little bit easier to get back in. It snaps back into place. And then reconnect the wires. Next thing in the kit is the receptacles. Right here and here, you'll get two of them. To take these out, pretty easy. The, uh, there's a, the tab at the bottom just sort of turns, unlocks, and it pulls straight out. Just put that down, pull off the whipper blade, then you'll turn this just a little bit more. There's a little wrench symbol right there. When you turn to that, it pops right out. Put it back together, just go in reverse. There's a little arrow on the whipper indicating where the flat spot on the uh, motor shaft is. Makes it a little bit easier to line up. Also, this piece right here, this black piece with the O-ring, they come in the kit, but we're not going to change these pieces, mainly because this is really a nightmare to get out without breaking it. You can if you want to. It's not going to hurt anything. 
But realistically, all we need to do is just change the O-rings. So just take the O-ring off of the new piece. And put it on to the old piece. And it'll work just fine. And then you can go ahead and hang on to these. That's it. Um, in case later on somebody loses one or breaks one or something like that. The last thing inside the door that we're going to change is this little silicone elbow. We'll just pull the paper out of the way, or you can tear it and rethread it. Disconnect it from the box and the back of the tube, and just put the new one in. Reconnect, and then rewind your paper. Um, and once you have the O-ring back on this piece here, which I didn't do yet, we go ahead and reassemble this. Also included in the kit is this little chunk of metal here. It's a gauge. Notice it's got a little divot right there. There's a, a nice chart, uh, a nice picture in your instructions that show you how to line this up. Uh, it's for uh, right back in here. So you'll need to remove this uh, brew, brew chamber. Pull it off to the side. This panel here is held in by two screws. And what this gauge is doing is, is uh, measuring the height of this spring right here. So it goes right in like this. And again, refer to that picture in your uh, instructions. It'll show you how it's supposed to line up. If you have trouble putting these, uh, these flathead screws back in, try a screw starter. Clip the screw on like that. It makes things go a lot easier. Get the screw started, and then tighten them up with the regular screwdriver. So that's it for the inside of the machine. Everything else, we're going to have to turn the machine around and get into the side. Now that we have the panels removed, the next thing we're going to do is change the vacuum pump here. It's located right up here in, in, inside the machine. All, all you have for connections is this tube at the bottom, which is right here. This tube right here at the top that you can see right here. And of course, unplug the wires. It's held in place by a silicone strap that goes right around the motor part, the motor portion right here, the silver part. And to get that out, all you have to do is just reach up in here, no tools needed, just grab this silicone strap here, pull it loose, run it around the tube if you haven't disconnected it, and then the whole thing just comes right out. And then, of course, to put it back in, just run the, the strap back around and snap it back into place. Just pull it tight, stretch it a little bit, and it goes right back around the hook. And it's just that easy. Next thing we're going to change is this little filter. It's an inline filter. It goes in the tube, uh, one of the tubes from the uh, three-way valve here. Some machines will have this, some machines won't. If your machine doesn't have one, look in the diagram that comes in the kit. It'll show you exactly which tube it, it's in and where to cut it and put this in line. Of course, if you have one in your machine like I've got here, I'll just take the old one out and put this one right back in its place. Now, there is no direction on this, so it doesn't matter which, which way you put it. So don't worry about that. There's no arrows on there because it doesn't matter which way you put it in there. So it's just a matter of uh, reaching back through here and grabbing the tubes, disconnecting both sides. It comes out just that easy. And then put the new one right back in the same place. And there you go. Okay, the next step is we want to clean this port out. This is the three-way valve. We're going to clean that port out right there. We don't have to remove this from the machine. We can do it from just right where it's at. So this tube just disconnects. 
This white fitting here unscrews and comes out. Behind there, there is a, a silver fitting, a stainless steel fitting. Uses a 9 16 wrench. Just unscrew that. We want to make sure this is all clean and clear right here. And inside is a 532nd Allen bolt right down through the center here. So this coil whole coil comes loose so we can take a look at the plunger here and make sure everything is clean and clear we're not really replacing anything in here unless it's damaged and then of course to put it back together is just the reverse Make sure it's good and tight, and then just reconnect the tube. The next thing we're going to do is rebuild all the valves in the back. On the back of the machine, there's an access panel towards the top. Take the screws out, and it pops right off. The valves just pull out. There's no other screws or additional bracketry or anything like that. Of course, before you take these out of the tank, you want to drain the tank down uh, using the, the drain tube excess from the side panel. Make sure you drain the tank down at least below this, these valves. So this valve just pulls out, it's got an O-ring seal, just pulls out of the back of the tank. It's got four screws.
And the reason we replaced this whole plastic piece is that we found that sometimes when you're removing this and putting it back on, since this is uh, right up against hot water all the time, it, uh, some of, sometimes they crack and then you're stuck with uh, the machine down just because uh, the PM, uh, in the, during the PM, one of your parts cracked. So uh, replace that whole body. Uh, but you might want to hang on to this just for future. If, uh, if you run into another one that breaks, you, you have, you've got a spare. Also included with the kit, in case you want to delime the tank, the tank lid is right here. You take the top panel off the machine to access the, the tank lid, pull it off, and the, the kit does come with a gasket. But just because you get the gasket in the kit, don't think that you have to change this. It's only if you need to, if you need to delime the tank. So lastly, what we have is um, a grommet that goes right here in the front for the valve. And then also the brew screen that goes right in the top of this box here. So with the brew screen, it's sort of an inspect and replace as necessary item. Uh, you can choose to replace it every time if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, if this one's damaged, I'll show you real quick. The valve, of course, like earlier, just pulls right out. And this grommet just pulls right out. And then just replace it with the new one. Before I do that, I'll show you how the box comes out, our elbow. Metal tray. Then the box just lifts right out. So we've got four screws here on the top. Just take that, take that top off, this thing pushes off and pushes back in if you need to. This one's in great shape, so we don't need to change it. And then put it back together in reverse. So that's all there is for the 12 p.m. Uh, remember, if you get any questions or if you have any questions as you're going through this, feel free to give us a call. Uh, tech services phone number is on your screen. It's 1-800-286-6345. Uh, if you're working late in the afternoon or even if you get stuck working on the weekend, that's okay. We've got weekend service available and after hour service too. So feel free to give us a call and uh, we'll help you out. Okay, so now we've got time for questions. Um, submit your questions. I'll try to go through as much as I can here. Um, and we've, we've got plenty of time. How often should you do a PM? Uh, how often should you do a PM? Oh, I'm not seeing the questions here. Uh, we have a six-month PM, and this, this, what we just showed you today, is a 12-month PM. But the video on the six-month PM is, is available also. It's basically everything except for the tank lid gasket, the brew screen, um, and, uh, and the valves in the back, the valves along the back side. Um, everything else is in the uh, six month PM, same as the 12, uh, including, including the vacuum pump. This does get changed every six months. What is the roll of paper at the bottom left used for? This paper roll here? is uh, filter paper. So uh, we have uh, the brew chamber here it comes down, the coffee and the water go into here, and then uh, we provide a vacuum in here to draw the coffee through the paper and through this mesh. Now this mesh does a pretty good job at, at uh, filtering out, but it's still gonna let some coffee solids through. So by using the paper filter, it ends up in a much clearer cup with no, no residues at, at the bottom. Uh, the grinder is pretty rugged, and right now uh, there, there's not a PM required on that. Um, you, you can take it apart and clean it if it gets clogged. Um, if uh, foreign objects happen to get in there and get, get lodged in there, you can just take these four screws off right here and take this off. The grinder adjustment is here on the front, set by the factory. Uh, if you want to make the grinds finer, just loosen this jam nut here and turn this screw clockwise. If you want to make the grinds coarser, turn it counterclockwise and then lock it back in place. Um, uh, you, can, you can, if you want, take this apart and clean it periodically, uh, but, but there's no official recommendation right now. For high volume locations, should you perform a PM on number of 
of cycles instead of time? That's a good question. Okay, you have the option here to, uh, to set a number of cycles um, or, if you, or, uh, or based on days. So this one's got both set, but you can choose how many cycles or how many days. It's, it's up to you. The, this is a six month and a 12 month, but um, it can easily go by, by number of cycles. When you rebuild the valves on the rear, aren't you required to recalibrate the flow on the valves? Since you're replacing the spring and the flow valves will change? That's a good question. I haven't heard about that. Um, if the flow is different, I guess, yeah, I guess it would be a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Thanks for that question. Well, first of all, are you guys hearing these questions? I don't know if they're hearing the questions or not. Um, into calibrations. This one's for the uh, brew water valve, but uh, let me see the powder valves back here. So this is where you do the, the, the uh, calibration. Um, you run three calibrations, and the machine is looking for the, the valves to be um, in a certain range. And if they're not in the range, then you will adjust them. I'll just show you the valve here. They can they can't hear the questions. Okay. The question was, after replacing the valve on the back, uh, do you need to recalibrate the valve? Um, so this is the calibration uh, screen. You do three tests in a row. You enter your ounces. The machine will tell you with, if it's within a range or not. If it's not within a range, then uh, there's a screw right here to make the adjustments. These should be set out of the factory. I don't believe you really should have to do, um, well, that's not true. You should have to do calibration because, because they're different. So thanks for the question. That's something we missed. Thank you. How many cycles before it needs a PM? That's also a good question. The, uh, in the screen it said 20,000 cycles. Let me see. This is uh, the d default settings is um, six months or 20,000 cycles, so whichever comes first. Um, that's a, just a general rule, of course. You can choose to do it more often or, or less often if you like, but um, that's a general rule, whichever comes first. With all those wires in the way, it looks like something could bump or be disconnected if they're accidentally hit or something. You might want on the, on the side. Okay, yeah, the question is, um, as I was changing these parts on the side and kind of reaching my hands in there with all, through all those wires, um, is it possible or it looks like it's possible for something to become dislodged or pulled loose or, or anything like that? Um, I didn't have any problem with this here today, and as many of you might recognize and, and, and remember, when you're trying to unplug something out of one of these machines, it's kind of tricky because they're on there really, really nice and tight. Uh, I don't think that, that you really have anything super delicate over here to worry about as far as, uh, as, far as something coming loose on accident. Uh, of course, be careful and, and you know, try not to pull anything loose, but um, nothing particularly delicate that you need to look out for now. Product number for the six month PM kit is 54078.0001. The product number for the 12 month PM kit is 54079.0001.
Well, if there's no more questions, um, I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Or if you've got a question, hurry up and, and type it in real fast before we shut everything down. Um, thanks for joining us, though. And uh, uh, keep in mind, we've got a lot more of these things to come. And so just keep looking at the schedule and, and see what, what's, uh, what's coming forward. Um, we, we've asked a lot of questions about uh, what we need to do. So um, there's a lot of suggestions and a lot of, uh, a lot of hot topics coming up. Um, sort of the uh, most requested first and that sort of thing. So uh, thanks for joining us. And oh, we got another question. Is it now a good time to do a PM or should we wait for after COVID? Um, that's a good question. If your time frame is close, I would recommend doing it now. You've got, uh, you've got a good window of opportunity where the machine's maybe not being used very much. Uh, you can get it in and make sure that when somebody opens up that business on day one, they push brew, it's going to run. Um, so it's a really good idea to do it now while everything's shut down. Um, particularly, you know, if the, if, if the machine wasn't cleaned or rinsed, um, and the question, sorry, I didn't repeat the question. The question was, um, is it a good idea to do the PM now or uh, during, during COVID shutdown? Or if they should, or, or if we should wait, um, the the brew screen uh, can get clogged up with coffee residue. So if somebody didn't clean or rinse it, um, whenever it was shut down and uh, and turned off, um, the first first brew that they try to run, uh, it, it could give them a vacuum error uh, to where it won't run. It couldn't get the liquid through through the screen. So um, if you're coming up on that 12 month PM, you might want to do that. At least go in and freshen them up and and. At least run a nice, nice cleaning cycle. But if you're anywhere around the time frame, you might want to go ahead and do it now. I think um, the, everybody's sort of thinking that uh, once everything gets up and running again, there's going to be a shortage of service personnel, and there's going to be a high demand for service, and not many people to 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 go out, not uh, not enough people to go out and, and perform all the service. So anything you can do during the shutdown to be ready for for a startup again is probably a good idea. What about? Um, what is air infusion? Okay, air infusion. This is the, the brew chamber. When the brew chamber, uh, when it starts to brew, obviously it comes down here. When we put the coffee in there and the water in there, we also, before we run the vacuum, we pump air into this box. And this air goes up through the filter, through the paper filter, up into the coffee. Uh, what that does is it rolls the coffee around so it, it evenly extracts each grain of coffee. Um, uh, then, then we flip that, that three-way valve and then draw the vacuum out. So um, that's, that's what the air infusion refers to. All right. Is that all, everybody? Okay, be on the lookout for invitations. Uh, we're going to be sending uh, invitations to, to some of you that um, have uh, certain pieces of equipment and in case you're interested in, in joining us for these things. We're trying to keep them short so uh, it doesn't take up all your day or half your day. Um, if you've got any topics that you'd like us to, uh, to cover on, on these webcasts, feel free to uh, contact your sales representative and uh, go from there. We've got another question. What do you use to beeline the tank? The question is, what do you use to delime the tank? Um, officially, I think um, we recommend vinegar because it's food safe. Uh, we, we don't really endorse or, or recommend any other harsher chemicals or anything like that. Uh, me personally, I don't recommend any chemicals at all. What I like to do is take the top of the machine off, access the top of the tank and take that off, I get in there with a, with a big flat blade screwdriver or something to scrape the edges of the tank and just knock all the scale loose that's going to come loose. Then you can get in there with a shop vac and vac all that stuff out of there. That's really, that's really the problem is all that loose stuff. Um, if you have uh, scale building up on your tank heaters, uh, you're probably better off just to replace the tank heater. Anytime you try to clean scale off a tank heater, a lot of the times you end up damaging it and they just, you just have to start all over and replace it anyway. So if you have a tank heater that's all coated in scale, my recommendation is just replace it. They're not all like that, all that expensive. But as far as the tank itself, scale in the tank doesn't really cause too much of a problem. What causes problem is scale in the openings where the water is trying to flow through. So if you have a tank wall that's coated in scale, 
Um, if you can chip at it and it falls right off, you want to get that stuff out of there. But if you chip at it and it's pretty stuck on there, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to leach its way back into the water because there's already scale in the water that's coming out into the tank anyway. So uh, my recommendation is do a physical cleaning, not necessarily gut it and, and soak it in acid or anything like that. Uh, just do a physical cleaning as, as, as well as you can to make sure all the openings are clean and clear. That's really, that's really uh, what causes you the trouble. question is, can the vacuum pump get liquid in it? Um, it can get liquid in it, um, and that doesn't necessarily cause too much problem if liquid gets into this part of it, but when the liquid keeps going down farther through the line, um, it can end up getting all the way down into the circuit board, and there's a, there's a, a, a tube that goes to a a sensor on the circuit board, so sometimes you'll, you'll find that uh, that needs to be cleaned out. Uh, there's a little little zip tie that holds it on the sensor. Just take that loose, uh, get a cotton swab or something, and, and clean that out real, real delicately, and then put it back together. That also will uh, show up as a vacuum pump error because that pressure, uh, pressure uh, transducer isn't, isn't I, I think that's the word, transducer, isn't, isn't picking up the right pressure because it's dirty. Waiting for any more questions? You might have noticed in the video, I called this a uh, liquid level probe grommet. It's not a liquid level probe grommet. It's the grommet that goes for this valve right in here, so I apologize for that mistake there. But uh, I'm just getting started with this stuff, so there's gonna be some mistakes. Feel free to point them out too and send me an email and tell me what I did wrong, it's okay. All right, we don't have any more questions coming in. Well, I guess we're gonna wrap it up for today. And like I said, uh, join us for the other ones. Look, look at that schedule at the Bun Learning Center and go to that schedule for the webcast. Um, you'll, see, you'll see all of them that are coming up and uh, um, I think they can be really helpful. All right, we'll sign it off. Have a good day.